geez, I'm all tangled up. I'm all tangled up in the line. <laughs> hey, George, reel in those lines, dude, please. If you can. I'm all tangled up in the line here. I'm trying to get this big old jack in. Now listen. Hey, I'm Trapper T and welcome to another adventure. So guess what? Today, I'm going fishing with my buddy George. George, say hey. Hey. All right. George owns George of the Jungle Tree Service. He's had that business for 40 years. And if you need your trees cut, go to George. Check it out. All right, follow us along. We're going to go slay them. Well, just got to the spot and um, it's like an old half bridge. I guess this used to be the original bridge of bridges around here. So, um, wow. Looks like a lot of structure. A lot of structure here. There should be fish. There's pilings everywhere. If we don't catch anything here on live shrimp, that's what we're, we're using. Um, I don't know, but it looks good. So follow me along. I'm going to check it out. There's George way down there. All right, let's go get him. Here it is. Live shrimp. Cute little bugger. Hopefully we catch something with him. I haven't used live shrimp in a long time. Uh-oh. He jumped out. He's trying to escape. He tried to. <laughs> Look at him. Look at his face. <laughs> escape artist. All right. Well, oh. wait a minute. George? George had himself a rockfish, we think, or I don't know what it is. Uh, oh, look at that. It's a sea snake. George caught a sea snake. Or garbage. Well, he still has his shrimp. Look at that. Oh, uh, a seaweed fish. Yeah. Shrimp is still on there, though. Well, me and George tried. We really tried hard at that half bridge. Nothing, not even a hit. So I'm back here with Daisy. My dog, AKA, also known on video, Shark's Bait. There she goes. Hey, Shark's Bait, come back here. No, no, Shark's Bait, come on. She doesn't know that name. So we're gonna try over here back at the house that I grew up at and see if we catch any fish. So follow me along. Hope we catch something. Well, the rods aren't bending, but we will see. There goes shark's bait going in the water. Shark's bait loves to swim. Come on, Daisy. Her real name's Daisy. I call her Lazy Daisy or Crazy Daisy, but her nickname's Shark's Bay. She's a pretty cool dog. She usually brings me good luck when I'm fishing. Now, if I don't catch any fish today with George, uh, that means we didn't have good luck. There's the poles, they're not bending. There's George over there. No hitch yet, huh, George? Okay. Something will happen. We're gonna hope for the best. I think I, I think I got a little hit here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, right there. Look at that. Tip of the pole. Look at that. Look at that. Tip of the pole. Yeah, yeah. He's on it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, right here. What is? Fight too. Oh yeah. Here we go. Look at that, leopard puffer. These are actually really good eating. I might take this home and clean them, but you gotta be real careful. Don't anyone do this unless you know what you're doing. These guys right here, they've got a little poison sack inside of them. 
And if you swallow that, any of the um, poison that's in there, you can die. You'll actually stop breathing. That's how bad it is. Now, this guy kind of caught in his tooth. I feel like a dentist. There you go. See his little buck teeth? You know what? I'm going to let you go. Look at his cute little red eyes. First fish of the day. See ya. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, there's something in there. So this coconut right here with the hole in it, I didn't do that with the machete. All these coconuts back in here, either squirrels or rats chew in through the coconuts like this and eat the center out. Look, there's another one. So if you ever wondered why there's a hole in most coconuts, it's because it, I believe it's squirrels or rats. So I'm gonna keep watching these poles. Still, nothing really. Just that one puffer fish. I should have kept him and ate him, but I, don't know, I didn't feel like cleaning that little thing. All right, I got one on, I got one on. This guy's a fighter too. In every video I do fishing, I always say, I think it's a catfish. And it's kind of, it's fighting hard. It's doing a weird dig, like a digging motion in the water. And that usually makes me think it's a jack or a catfish. That's all it can be, it's one or the other. If I'm wrong, you're gonna know. Coming up, and it is a catfish. Yup, I knew it too. Mr. Shark, look at him. Second fish of the day. And let me tell you about this fish. If you get barred by this thing, you will cry like a little baby. So, I'm gonna have to remove this real carefully. All right, let me get this guy off. Well, it's super windy out. As you can see, it's very windy. I have to yell. <laughs> and I think I got something on. I'm gonna tell you what it is. It is a starfish. The first man ever in history to capture a starfish. <laughs> Look at that. What the heck in my life? This has never happened. Poor little starfish. You see how it regenerates its legs right there? It's that little leg coming back. I'm gonna be real careful and take this hook out of this pretty little starfish and let it go. Oh, poor little feller. Jeez, this is crazy. I've never caught a starfish. You know what? It's in the starfish's mouth. He must have, or she ate the bait. There you go, I didn't harm it. I'm gonna let it go. Adios, starfish. Classic. Well, so far we've caught a catfish, puffer fish, and a starfish. But just relaxing, this is beautiful. Old tugboat going by, or I don't know, new tugboat, but pretty cool. Look at that bugger. Big old boat. All right, keep fishing until we run out of bait. Yo, yo, so I just got a monster on. I don't know what it is, but I think it wrapped itself around the dock, so enough to go in the water and retrieve this sucker. Oh, it's a monster, whatever it is. This sucker's big. Hopefully it's a snook, man. Hell yeah, look at that pole. Phew. This sucker's big. Oh my God. Jesus. God. I'm gonna manhandle this sucker. I am not losing this. Don't lose it, man. This is a monster, whatever it is. You guys, I hate to say it, it's running like a huge jack. A huge jack. Or it's a big seal cat. Oh, man. Or it's a freaking big way. old stingray. This thing's big, whatever it is, it's running. I want to say, whatever it is, it's freaking coming in. It ain't playing, so it's going into the beach. Whoa, oh, big old. Jack Rebel! Oh my god! Look at that sucker! He's huge! Nice! He's a monster! Now look, hey! Let me tell you something! Is that camera? Yes. Got it? I'll drop it. Look, most people don't get excited over Jack Rebels, but this one's a big one. And we sat here talking, talking about 
every story in the world for like, I don't know, like an hour. And it's just getting close to dark. He is right down there. And he, oh, he is, ah, oh, geez, I'm all tangled up. I'm all tangled up in the line. <laughs> hey, George, reel in this line, too, please. If you can, uh, I'm all tangled up in the line here. I'm trying to get his big old jack in. Now, listen, oh, most people would be like, oh, it's just a Jack Ravel. No, I grew up eating Jack Ravel. I think it's pretty good. You got to know how to cut the bloodlines out. Look at this guy. Here's a thumper. I got him too. Yeah. yeah. Get this bugger up. Oh man, he's barely on that hook too. Yup, he's barely on. Dude, he's barely on. George. Hold this for a second. I'm gonna go down and try to get this guy. Try to be real careful. Mm -hmm. It is fairly hooked man. The best way to go in to get this guy is spin him like that for a second. Man, he's a heavy sucker. Look at that guy. Woo! Look at him. Oh yeah. That's a nice jack. Heck oh yeah. yeah. Mouth right there. He tore that bait up. What's up, buddy? You're going to be dinner tonight. I'm going to show you how to cook Jack Crivella. I did a uh, catch clean, ke a, a catch and cook the other day with ramen noodles, but I'm going to show you how to play this one properly. Follow me along. Hey, as I was reviewing the Jack Crivella that just caught right there, that sucker's big. Well, he's a monster, dude. Well, I was. While I was walking along, I stepped on this little crab. And he actually, he stuck into my foot and I, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a shell and I reached out and he bit me. So I'm gonna let him go. A little guy right there. He's the culprit. See ya. That's a big old jack. That's a big old jack. Big old Jack Crevel. <laughs> George, hold him real fast. Yeah. Let's compare him to George here. Look at this guy. Ah, he's slippery. Sure is. Look at that bugger. Hold him, hold him up to your chest like that. Yeah. There you go. Look at that thing. He's, he's bigger than George almost. <laughs> he's a monster. <laughs> I got the Jack Revelle. A lot of people say Jack's no good. I've said this before in videos. It's excellent if you know how to clean it. First thing you need is a real sharp knife. Make an incision right about here, kind of at an angle. Do a quick cut on down the lateral line of the fish like I'm doing. As close as possible. And this fish right here, you're going to slowly keep cutting along, cutting along, just like this. And then, you're going to flip it this way, take it out, drop it in the water, clean it up a little bit, flip it this way. There we go. You got to take it off the bone. And unfortunately, there's a bit of a waste in this fish. But you have to get rid of those bloodlines or it will taste like garbage. You can't even give it to a cat. A cat won't eat it. So take it down this way. Once you get to the end of the tail, hey, 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 shark's bait. Got to watch out for that little dog right there. See that little dog? <laughs> that little dog right there will take your fish away. So here we go. Flip it over. Give it one more wash in the water. All right. Turn it this way. Shark's bait. Shark's bait. Shark's bait's excited, by the way. It wants to eat this fish, but I'm not letting it. Lay it down, the knife flat. Follow along this fish, just like this. Watch how I peel it back. Keep going. All the way down. Keep going. Just like this. Follow it on down. 
This is the part where people mess up on. See this right here? All that red junk. It tastes like pure blood or iodine if you eat it. You want to get the clean whiter parts and the light red parts. So you take the knife, lay it sideways again. You want to just cut right in there to get the bloodlines out. You're going to take it at an angle like this. Almost at a 45 degree angle. You're going to go underneath the bloodlines. This is the trick. Right there, look at that. Look at that. Magic. There's the loin off the back. Like I said, there's a bit of a waste to this, but look at this loin. That is magnificent. This has no bones. It's nice and clean. It tastes like tuna if you do it this way. This part, all garbage. And you can even get a bit of the loin out from here. So I'm gonna to try to do that right now. Shark's bait, don't try to eat it. Just take that off. There you go, another nice piece. This, I'm gonna to give to my dog. Here you go. Chow away, chow away. <laughs> the rest goes to the crabs. There it is, nice clean product. I'm gonna cook this up later. That's the way you do Jack Crevel. Remember, get rid of the bloodlines. Make sure you do not put any of that in with what you're cooking and just take the nice clean loin off the back. Tastes like, just tastes like tuna if you do it that way. What a killer day. Me and George went out, we slayed it. I'm taking this Jack Ravel home, the big one. I showed you how to clean it up. You gotta do it that way, cut all the bloodlines out. Just take the loin off the back and it's delicious. Well, bold shark's bait is at it again. Look at her. She jumped off the seawall after a pelican and now she's down in the water and she has no way of getting back up. Shark's bait, how are you getting back up? All right, I'm back. So I'm about to cook this Jack Crevel that I told you is going to taste like tuna. And here's the one, two, three, four, five things you're going to need. Remember how I showed you to fillet it? Next step is you need lemon, you need butter, you need the fish, you need Paul Perdone's black and seasoning. Look at his smiley face and olive oil. Put the olive oil in the pan. Just like that, right there, real simple. Pop off the top of the Paul Perdones, right here. Sprinkle it on the one side of the fish, just like that. Take the butter, just like this. Drop it in, here it's sizzling. Go like this, just swish it around, swish it around, and as soon as it melts, you take the fish with your fingers, pick it up, see the block inside, set it down. Keep it on real hot. Wait a second and hit this side with a little of Paul Verdone's again. Get ready with the lemon, there's the lemon. And then simply wait a couple seconds. I wait about, on this high of a heat, about 30 seconds. Let it sizzle, let it sizzle. And then slide your little fork in, flip it. Look at that, a little blocking on one side. Now, time to hit the lemon. Woo! Sizzling. Get real, keep it on a real high heat. That's what I do. Cause you're basically blackening this fish. I had a little more blackened seasoning. Just like that. Swish, swish, swish. And it's sizzling up real nice. Take one more flip. Ooh, look at that bugger. One more little hit of this. A little bit more lemon. Turn off the stove. That took all of a minute and 30 seconds. You do each little filet about four inches. Drop it in, take it out, slide it over to the plate. There we go. Cut into the center, just like this. And now to test it. 
Look at that. Look at the red in the middle. Like tuna. I'm gonna try it. I'm telling you, you gotta try this. That recipe is simple. Take the hot plate off the stove. It's as good as tuna. I gotta have another bite. That, magnificent. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe and please like, and give me a comment. If you wanna see something else, just throw it out to me, I'll do it. And um, thank you very much. I'll see you all in the next adventure.